What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I can't believe I have to say this, but I just watched one of the worst press conferences of E3, and it was by Square Enix, somebody that I'm absolutely in love with. This is a studio that is so renowned for creating giant RPGs, good action games, and really expanding into different markets to give us the games we love most. Well, first and foremost, their press conference was incredibly short, had nobody actually on a stage, and was really just a tiny little set of trailers with almost no gameplay. But here's the biggest disappointment is I was expecting at least one surprise, something to truly shock us. I mean, that's kind of what's been going on with other, other showcases so far this year is that people go, all right, that's everything we have to show except for this game. And you know what they did for here? Nothing. I am so frustrated because we didn't even get the tiniest glimpse of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's still possible that we'll see that at the Sony Showcase later this evening, but why not bring it out here and now? Honestly, while I was taking notes for this, I was just kind of sitting here, kind of twiddling my thumbs, being like, okay, these are the small little things until I get to the giant reveals that never ended up coming. So let's talk about what I think was probably, well, shockingly, the best part of this, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, I was not exactly super hyped for this going into it because I played the, pla the past two Tomb Raider games and they were fun, but they... I don't know, I just didn't really feel myself hungry more of that. But it seems like the major thing they're doing is it seems like they've shifted the game to be dramatically more about stealth. Taking out targets one by one, staying camouflaged by possibly smearing mud on yourself and staying in the shadows, and also doing stuff like shooting poison arrows that can drive people crazy to attack their friends. They've also introduced some extra new gameplay features like the ability to disengage. If people are trying to kill you, you can actually go and hide again instead of making it where every tiny screw-up turns into a giant firefight. Something else that was kind of cool is, um, I'm not the biggest fan of Final Fantasy XIV. I understand that it is fantastic, but I just don't have enough time to play MMOs. I'm constantly working about 70 hours a week. But I've heard from all my friends that this game just keeps getting bigger and better, and something they've been doing along with all their expansions is weird crossovers, and during this presentation, they announced that they're doing a Monster Hunter Final Fantasy XIV crossover. They're going to blend the universes for maybe some sort of quest or some sort of giant raid boss. But man, that is big, weird, and totally different. Now, I do think that that's kind of how I felt as well about Just Cause 4, because Just Cause 3 was fun, but it never really kind of got its hooks in me. It's one of those games that it was a great sandbox. Wandering around and blowing stuff up was intriguing, but for some reason I never got addicted to it. It seemed like if I just walked away from the game at any point, I'm not really losing out. It's not one of those must-play experiences. Well, with Just Cause 4, they're really trying to expand things to be bigger, better, and a lot more beautiful. It takes place in this new fictional country that has stuff like giant pyramids and rainforests and all sorts of different cities for you to fly around in. Now, I like this because it really makes it where it, it creates creates an environment that you want to participate in, especially because they've also really kind of talked about the fact that weather effects are really going to be a big part of this. You're going to be able to have super tornadoes show up that'll tear apart entire structures or lightning strikes that'll explode whatever helicopter you're in. Now, that sounds like some good changes to the game, and I have to say that that makes it a sequel worth playing. But other than this, there isn't really a lot that completely just made me melt my brain. I mean, I'm happy that we're seeing more stuff about, uh, well, Dragon Quest XI, but I still didn't get that many details. Dragon Quest XI in general looks like it's going to be a super fun 100 hour long RPG with good customization and great characters and really weird goofy archetypes. But at the same time, they didn't really show too much, it was kind of just like a 90 second trailer that said, hey, don't forget that this game is coming out. It kind of just left me hungry to see something that would actually get me invested. Of course I'm going to play that, but 
At E3, I always think that a press conference is supposed to win over the people who don't know about your game. You have to come out on stage and show them something that's going to immediately get them invested in the product. But if I just watch some of these trailers, I'm not going to know what the heck's even going on. Like, Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, I know that that game is definitely for only the most hardcore of hardcore existing fans, but somebody like me who's beaten the games, just watching that new gameplay, it seems like the combat is fantastic, but I still feel like I'm a little bit lost as to what the heck is going on. I mean, there's somebody being like, alright, what you need to do is get your heart, and your heart will unite the hearts to make the heart blade into a heart gun that shoots people in, spoilers, the heart. Kingdom Hearts just looks like it is so eccentric and so deep cut weird that I feel like it, I, I don't know, I feel like it's going to have some trouble just gathering up a bunch of steam because how are people going to get invested in a game that to them is really, really, really bizarre and doesn't make a lot of very good logic? Now, I'm not going to say that this conference was terrible overall. It's just weird that it was so short and, and so lackluster. There wasn't really just something to come out on stage and make you jaw drop other than one thing. And I do think that it's something that has the most potential, but it also had such a short, short little tease of it. There's something called Babylon's Fall. Now, the reason this is really interesting is because we knew for a fact that somehow Platinum Games was working on some secret projects because we'd seen some different rumors, we'd seen some different leaks, so we knew that they were doing something, but we didn't really have any concrete evidence as to what it was. But now, with this incredibly tiny teaser, we know that what they were actually digging into is something that sort of looks like an action RPG in the style of Dark Souls. But in my opinion, it has a sort of Final Fantasy style to it. And the reason I say that is a lot of the armor pieces looking just overly rough in such a gorgeous way. And the humongous bad guy who looks like Garland from the Final Fantasy games. There is something about this that has a real Four Warriors of Light vibe to it that gets me immediately invested. Especially because the trailer starts in a very unconventional way, giving us a very extended timeline of this entire planet, showing civilizations rise, inventions being formed, and the eventual apocalypse. And now, after the world has ended, we're seeing this crazy amount of events take place. I like post-apocalyptic games that are more about swords and sorcery, magic and madness, and this game definitely seems to be scratching that itch. It's so hard for me to try and get hyped about any of this stuff that was shown though, because this was such a crazy abbreviated press conference. Square Enix is constantly working on stuff like indie projects, weird spin-offs, good stuff here and there that they could have shown off, but for some reason flat out didn't. They just chose to keep their mouths shut. You could have shown a deus ex, or maybe done something like there were rumors that you guys were going to try and do some sort of reveal of a Final Fantasy Tactics 2, and none of that came to fruition. You guys didn't even bother to show up on stage. You had a small little announcement from the president of the company, opened it up, showed a couple teasers, and then left. You gave us almost 30 minutes of bare bones, tiny, tiny little slices of games that, while probably being fun, did not at all pique my interest. I think stuff like The Silent Man and your uh, The New Life is Strange game are kind of interesting in a very vague way, but after watching this, I don't really know what the heck I'm going to be specifically playing from Square Enix that's going to be filling up all my afternoons for the next couple of years. You left me just in a pit of disappointment and it makes me just honestly want to take down this strategy guide because if you guys aren't going to talk about Final Fantasy 7 then I guess I don't have a good excuse to talk about Final Fantasy 7. I am going to be giving the Square Enix press conference a 4 out of 10. I can't believe I'm doing that but you guys could have and should have done better. 
Thanks so much for watching, gamers. This has been my rough, off-the-cuff thoughts about the press conference, and I'm going to be doing that for every single one of these showcases throughout E3. So if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. It's going to be a blast. Be sure to give this video a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. All right. I'm going to go replay Final Fantasy VII for a 78th time because I guess you guys are just going to pretend that the remake never happened. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.